Hey, how's it going there? So I've been uh, working on appliances lately and uh, this one I completely took down and I started putting it back together and I decided, you know, I should make a video in case somebody's done this and they're not sure what's going on. I got some cheats I recommend before you completely disassemble something take pictures of it. In my case I've got a couple extra dryers um, that are similar to this one so I can look to see how things are. And some things I noticed is uh, so, I mean, I had this thing completely tore down. So I'll kind of recap some of the things I put on. This, I put on uh, a couple things. Is There's some notches. Oh, here, I'll show you on the one. Hold on. All right, this is the other side of that. I was just showing you. This is supposed to be slid into here. This is a different one. But uh, see these notches on the bottom? I think that's right. Yeah, so this heating element. It's got little lips here, they slide in there, and then some screws go on there. Um, this is how this looks. It, you sh I didn't take this off, um, but if you did somehow manage to get that off, um, see it kind of clips in there and the white goes there and it's got a lead there. This piece was kind of interesting. Uh, oh, this is not the one I want to show you though, but if I remember right, this kind of hooks in like that and you screw that on. I might have that backwards. I'll show you on the one I got correct. But um, the thing, main thing I wanted to show you was on the inside that has these notches. There's little ledges that those have to slide into. This is tricky. Um, it's supposed to have this bend in it and the um, clip you're just going to have to fill around with it. I'll show you what it looks like on the other one. So back to this one. So again, there's some white deal sticking out there. And those notches I showed you, they clip onto there. This whole thing just rotates forward. And I'll show you what this clip looks like. You just got to get it in there. And it's going to fight you a little bit for some reason. Um, and then it just screws on right there. And it's just held on by this clip. So this one, the little notch I was showing you goes into the top and it screws in on the bottom. The white wire goes on top, the red wire on the bottom. Um, this is kind of interesting. There's an orange wire that plugs in and there's one leg that doesn't have anything on it. And then I think these are just both red wires on the top and on the bottom there. This has a notch. You have to slide it in this back end in first, and then it'll seat in so you can put the screw on. It's just got two blue wires. I don't see any striping on those. I didn't take this off, I just took this whole unit off. I recommend doing that as much as possible. If you're going to disassemble it, why pull the prongs off of something if you don't have to? Um, this has got two purple wires. Again, I didn't pull the wires off there. It looks like the red wire with the white stripe goes on the the bottom and the red one on top. Um, the blower motor assembly, when I was taking it apart, took real careful to worry about where those screws. Let's see if I can zoom up on one. Those little screws right there. I was really worried about which hole because when you take this off, there's lots of holes in there. So I put it back into the holes when I was cleaning that. Um, turns out it, you don't have to worry about that that much just you want to make sure you got the screws that are for this and there's only holes that are drilled out they'll match up with the many holes here I'll show you on the other side what I'm talking about see there's blank spots all around there there and there but the, it'll only go in the correct holes so you don't really have to worry about it as much as I thought um, Another trick I do is, as much as you can, put the screws back in the holes they came out of. That'll help you out in case you got different kind of screws. Usually I try to do that with just screws that are different. Um, like this screw was different, so I uh, I left that one in. Um, but like something like this, I wouldn't worry about because this is a standard screw. The only thing I didn't take apart on this was this. And it's just held on by a couple of screws. Took the motor out and everything. 
Um, so back to over here again. So just don't have to worry about the screws will only go in the right holes. And then I tuck the wire harness underneath here. This was kind of tricky. Note this. So the plastic goes on the outside. The screw, you know, obviously goes on that side. And the terminal blocks are up. And the red one is on the right. And then it goes white and the black. And I'm not sure if I got my ground right on this. You know, this gets into that whole, um, if you're doing a three wire or four wire setup. Uh, anyhow, then another thing, these clips I just left on. This is going to eventually go to the dryer sw switch to put that back in. A tip for taking these out. Um, let's see, where is my tool? Oh man, I can't find it. Oh, there it is. So, you know, everybody's got one of these things. I think this is like the Harbor Freight one. Um, I don't like it because these little plastic things fall off, but the quarter inch socket will fit right on there if you push down. It can maybe I can do it with one hand because it's already been out. Anyways, you push a quarter inch will be almost perfect for taking those out. You could probably switch to a metric and go a little smaller if it didn't work for you, but the quarter inch, you know, and it socketed, so maybe you twist it a little bit. Yeah, that's what I did. And then, of course, you got to push down while you're doing that, but that helped get those out a lot if you're dealing with those. Make sure it's in. Um, oh, on the motor, I started putting it in. That was the last thing I did. You know, it's got the big clip. If that part points to the back, I'll probably have to take that clip off because I didn't realize. And then, you know, you got your wire connector. And I put my ground back there. Um, I don't have the front clip on. And I was almost ready to put the back on. And I realized I should uh, put the fan blower. That's the next step I gotta do. And that's why I wanted to show you because once I put this on, you can't see those screws back there. This just, uh, oops, sorry. This just goes on here. And there's a trick for this. Um, what you do is you get yourself a flat pair of uh, lock jaws and put that here. And then, you can, oh, you can't see it. The, oh, it's because I got that darn clip on. That's why I shouldn't have put that clip on. You can put a wrench. Here, I'll show you on the other end. You want to get it off. You can put a wrench. Can't remember which way it spins. There you go. See, this is square. That's why I need to take that back clip off. You can put a big crescent wrench on this and the, lock the front of the motor and just tighten this down. Don't reef it on there so tight you can't ever get it off, but you just snug it up. Um, so you need to do that before you put the motor on. So I'm going to stop here. Hopefully this made sense. Um, boy, if you have any questions on this, I won't have a dryer to look at. But I think I covered everything I've done so far. Just draped the wires over here. This should be a ground wire. I believe it goes here. I got three of them I got to check. Remember I did. But this is all going mostly to the uh, control panel section. So it kind of gets you up where I'm there. Maybe this video will help somebody out that's taking theirs apart and they're trying to get it back together again. Okay, so this fan, uh, you turn it to the left to tighten it. So you just slide it in under the shaft and uh, start turning it. And you can spin it pretty pretty easily. And just keep doing that till it takes. And as you're doing it, you can kind of look over this side and you'll know when it's kind of seated when it starts turning the motor which doesn't take much effort um, I took that back clip off here's what that looks like and it goes on the back of the motor like this with the clip part to the front but by taking it off you can see that's the back of the shaft right there and uh, so all you gotta do is you can take a wrench slide it on that shaft and hold it in place and then take a, I like this one Let me pick this up out of garage sale it's got a nice flat piece you just put this on here and then tighten it and like I said I think it's reverse thread so you'll figure it out 
but uh so the mistake I made was putting the clip on which covers up that access port. Okay, I wanted to give you a good close up of this part here. Um, this little bracket just fits inside the this groove right here. And it's the same deal on the back. That bracket right there goes into that groove there. And you can even see right there there's little notch little dimple marks. That's from uh, this clip. It's got little dimples that keep it from moving, which make it kind of tricky to put on. I don't know of a good way to do this. I just uh, put the left side on first, and it just goes in those little clips. And I'm going to take a big screwdriver and uh, press down and try to get this to go on. Um, and you're just going to have to fight with that. But it'll eventually clip in, you just want to make sure it clips in. Then you do the same in the back. Clip to the, this clip in first and then push down with the screwdriver to clip it in. Alright, the next thing I did is I put on this piece. Um, this is actually where your dryer filter goes. And eventually this will, those are those, when you very first start working on dryer, you usually take out the first two screens and the screws of the uh, filter area. And that's eventually where that's going to go. Um, let's see. It's pretty easy. It just takes two or three um, those quarter inch screws, and there's one there, one down there. I guess it's four. One there, and one there, and that just holds it in place. Uh, a little tip tip for you. So I like to get an old uh, paintbrush and just use it specifically for dusting. So if you uh, let's say this is really corroded. A lot of times you can just dust things off. You don't have to worry about like spraying a cleaner on there and then trigger how you're going to get it off. Because a lot of times when you add a liquid to something, it makes the dust stick to it more. Uh, so a lot of times I'll just go through and dust out. It's very handy. And I clean my sensors with these. Like this one here, was I noticed it was dirty, so I took it off and I, and I cleaned it up there and it looks really good now. And then you're done right away because it's a dry clean. So... Anyways, moving right along, I'll show you as I get going. Alright, I say the next step I'm going to do is put in the drum, and the reason for that is I need to get the lid on to um, get those wires up through the top lid plate and then start working on the control panel. Um, so the I just uh, shoot a little, I usually use the white lithium grease if I need to grease a bearing or something. So I put a little in there, get this turning really quiet. And then it's got a little lip in the front and those little prongs in the back. And uh, you just put the lip in front first. And that's how that goes in there. And then this puts tension on the belt. Also another thing, this is just kind of, I've noticed when working on stuff, you'll notice the shaft, if your shaft has grooves in it, um, and your belt has grooves, you're going to put the grooves, uh, the belt, into the grooves of the shaft there. And what I'm talking about on a belt, the belt over here, on the belt you're going to have a, a smooth side and a groove side. So it doesn't make sense to put the smooth side having the grooves of the, pull, or the motor drive shaft. It would just cut it up. That's why they got that there so that will help you because some drivers put the smooth side to the drum other ones will put the rib side to the drum and, it really, and it, that's a manufacturer decision and it all boils down to your grooves are always going to go if you have grooves are going to go into the pulley or not the pulley I call this the pulley or tensioner um, go into your drive shaft if that makes sense there so How's I gonna do is uh probably won't show this. You just put the drums that sits on those back rollers, there's tons of YouTube videos in this. Put the drum in, and then I gotta fight with the pulley to get it arranged correctly. Um obviously you can't get the the belt under here, so it can be some form of uh this putting tension on the belt. And going around the drum so it'll probably make sense when you start assembling it all right thought I'd show you how I 
put this belt on. Um, the rib side does on this model dryer face the um, the drum. And when I say this model dryer, basically all the dryers that the vent screens come out at the top are pretty much all whirlpools now. Um, they're made tags and mana, but the same design. So, oh, by the way, three two by fours will be pretty good height for um, that's kind of dusty for uh, putting your drum on to support your drum while you're working on your belt. So it frees up both your hands. And so the way this works is the belt comes down here, the ribs side is facing the drum, goes here, and then goes around the shaft, and that's how you do it. And it kind of see it goes through this bottom piece here. So hopefully that's showing all up. And when you put this on, you put that front clip on first, put it, and so the way I did it was uh, I kind of concentrate on the pulley first. I put the front end in, then clip this down, I took the belt, tucked it through here, and then grabbed it, and it's easier with two hands. And you probably one hand I was pu pushing back on the pulley, and the other one I just looped it over there. Just don't get your fingers caught in there. Get nice and tight there. Now, I don't know how. I'm gonna get up. I don't know. I'll see if this, uh, how much weight is on. Well, apparently a lot of weight, but it did help out. Oh, and the back rollers, see they write on the groove in the back there. Um, you just wanna make sure your felt lining gets all seated correctly there. And so now I gotta put the front end on and this will sit up in the front and that's what will hold this uh, correctly. And there's these little clips here, one here and one here. And the front, which I got too far away, I'll just put the bottom of it sides into these clips and then you just line everything up, push it up. And then from the back side you put screws in to hold the front on. It just has two screws holding the whole thing together there. Um, and there should be a wire for your door switch. And there's my door switch. I got it hooked up right there. Anyway, so I'll pick it up in just a minute. Okay, kind of the tricky part on this, and it's probably not going to show up on camera. But the felt down there. There you can see it. It's right here. It's felt. It's got to go inside the drum. And the way I had to do it was, uh, of course, the bottom sits on because I put the, you put the clips, put the base of this on those little clips down there, and then uh, the drum's gonna just sit on the bottom of the felt. The felt's attached to the front of the thing, so put the dryer or the lid. The front will go into the felt of the dryer easily on the bottom, and then I just work the one side up and it would not seat here so then I just take the dryer this was over here just take the dryer and pulled that over and it kind of made it slide it you know worked itself into place and then once it seats in there you, you know this has got to be in the right spot is this felt goes on the outside and, uh, and the felt on the front of the drum goes on the inside of this piece then you just put your screws in there and there, and uh, that holds the front door on. Just kind of seeing if that looks like it's tight enough. And then now you got the whole front end on. All right, this is a good time to put your dryer switch in. If you look at it, obviously it only clicks one direction, and so it's when it's the door's closed, it only makes sense to go this way. It just has two screws. Should have a clip. You got to take this off to take the front on. Well, you don't have to. You have to disconnect it, or because it's wired up. Anyways, so there's just a, a square deal and two screws there. This has got two screws. So this is just going to drop down in here, and then we put the screws in from the bottom right there, and that holds that in. So it's just going to. Where's my thing? It's going to just sit like that when you get installed. And then you're going to put this clip in here, 
and then put that on and connect this wire up. Alright, now's a really good time to start testing stuff out, like the door switch. You just get a continuity tester. You touch these together. I like the ones that beep. It's hard to do one handed. And then you just stick these in here, touch it to each lead, and then close your switch and make sure it beeps when it's closed and doesn't beep when it's open. Because it would be a real bummer to put it all this together. And you should test these components as you go along. I'll show you how to test some of those other ones later on. Alright, show you where I am at there. Um, I just took this grounding strap up. Uh, I was surprised. I checked the other one. It was like that. This just uses a quarter inch or the smaller screws. And uh, let's see, how is I looking at this? So you have a longer one that's kind of attached to the end here. I'm talking about the grounding strap. And then this one connects to uh, that post. And the way I put this on is you see these clips and I didn't lock it in I just put it on so I just lifted it up like this and see those clips right there I just slid the lid on there and if you clicked it down onto the front tabs it'd lock down but then I didn't want to lock it down so I just gently set it down on here so I can I should really put something there but uh, that way I can work electrical and then it just comes up the center hole right here and that's where I'm at right now it's starting to look like a dry whoops trip over that it's starting to look like a dryer again um, so maybe I'll put in the oh no I can't put in that's the last step is to put those screws in it's tempting so I'm ready to start triggering to figure out how to wire up the front panel again there little tip never grab stuff um, the control panel don't put pressure on it they'll break off they're just little plastic tabs in fact I gotta do some repair work on that one because whoever had it before me broke them uh, I didn't know how to get it off or something where they supported it with that okay so now I'm working on the back of the control panel so as I do is I do this tinny part here so I see where the gauges go reason being is they got multiple spots they probably use the same bar for different kind of machines and so you know this lines up right there and so the last one will go right there and uh, these two pieces go in really easy they don't need any screws you just uh, see it's got a square notch up oops that was doing it one handed um, just put it in and then you twist it clips in the place and that's what I did with this one it's just to the side and it's kind of only one way if you took off the wires the white one with the red stripe goes on the bottom this one I don't think you could put it in wrong and I don't know how you would get that out um, but here's the wires they go purple on top blue there um, next I'll look at uh, I took some photos of this so I'll look at this what I have to do is uh, Oh, I guess I could do, looks like the ground strap probably went right there, so I'll hook that up. And then these, I just got to figure out which ones go. And I was just looking at it, and it says right there, orange, uh, it says WB, I guess it's, oh, white with black stripe. And that one's R, so it should be red. And I got some extra wires. So hopefully, oh no, some of these didn't look like they, no, this is black. So anyways, that's what I got to figure out next. It looks like this is colored. They got some markings on a lot of them, so hopefully it'll be pretty easy. So luckily on this one, uh, everything's marked and the ones, you had a couple extra wires that you weren't sure where to go. Well, they just go with the color coding one. So this one, this violet goes with the violet one. This blue one goes with the blue one, and uh, the rest are all just individual ones. So, yeah, 
and it looks like if I didn't take this off but the timer it even looks like it says TM so that's probably a timer and I guess you you'd have to know yeah, sorry about that my batteries died um, I'll just finished showing you up on the timer there as I saying everything's color coded uh, so it's pretty easy to match stuff up there uh, I don't know if I mentioned these things you just push these in and twist them they lock in and not too much left just gonna put on the back panel I'll make a separate video if anybody cares about it on on the wiring of three and four wire uh, a lot of videos on that already uh, this piece here just goes on uh, mine it's got a uh, screws that go down into a little plastic deal that hold these on which is nice because uh, a lot of people break these off and you can usually still hold these on with these screws here and what they break on them like somebody pulled the tab snapped the tab off now you can't see it over here but it's L shaped and it just locks in you just uh, put it in and slide it to the back but um, it holds on fairly good like these aren't strong you should not be pulling on these but that's about it uh, just gonna do some painting put knobs on I already threw these screws on there and your vent cover goes in there it's, this should be pretty much a, one of the last things you do because um, once you put this on you can't move the top cover anymore so that's about it uh, if anybody has any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and the uh, only thing I really didn't do is put on these side covers they just snap on and then uh, of course the back panel that should be in them there's a sheet metal panel that just gets held on with some screws here Anyways, if you have any questions, uh, leave them below and hope this video helps somebody out out there.